things. Eh? I, I, you can find all the recording. If you know, you know have how to find. Not all. I think some I haven't uploaded yet because it takes time. So the last week, 19 December. Uh, yeah, I think last week. Last week. So the Monday class, I think I have already uploaded on. Yeah, you can, if you feel like, and in the middle of the night you cannot sleep, then you switch on that YouTube or maybe buckling, buckling, buckling. Then you can sleep. Okay. If you want to do the revision, okay. Now, today also I'm going to record. I think. So now, what I would like to uh, first first part to cover today is the Euler formula and the Rankine formula. These are all for perfect column, which means the column perfectly straight, no eccentricity. Okay, but in perfect column that we have discussed uh, last week uh, in the last lectures, they behave differently. Immediately they bend. Immediately they bend, and uh, the uh, what, how much axial load that you can apply on the imperfect column is always less than the critical load. Okay. So today we're going to start off with the formula that we can use to predict what is the load that you can allow to apply on imperfect column. Okay. Remember Euler and Rankine formula, these are for perfect, perfect column. So this is the formula that this, this formula, Perry Robertson formula, has been adopted in design codes in slightly different form, but this is the formula that is being used. And this formula consider imperfections. Okay? This formula consider imperfections. Okay? Now, the detailed part of this uh, explanation about this, the more detailed part about the derivation process is given in one of the notes that I've uploaded to you later, I share with you. Now, I would like to start off with where does this, why Perry Robertson formula consider imperfection? Because it starts with this shape here. It started with this shape here. It started with this shape here that we see on this, uh, where it assumed that the column is already initially bent, okay, initially bent. And the, the mid height deflection is A. So this is the imperfection, it's already bent, uh, initial curve shape. Then when you apply loading, it will bend more. So this is additional bending. This is additional bending on top of A when you apply loading. Before you apply loading at P0, already bend. So this is a starting point. That's why the formula that we get at the end can be used to predict what is the load that you allow to apply on imperfect column. Okay. So now we look at the equations here. Now VC, this is VC at mid height here, extra when you apply loading from the initial. So that VC is given by these equations. And these equations, we have actually seen this equation in the lectures on Monday. And at that time, we use the symbol delta. Okay. So this delta C of VC here is an actual. Okay. So this delta C of VC here is an actual uh, the additional deflection at the middle of the column due to when we apply loading. And that is given by this formula here. A is the initial imperfections at the mid height. Alpha is the ratio of this. So now if we add up, we measure from here to here. If we measure from the initial, so we have A plus VC or A plus delta C, we make it equal to delta. So this is the deflections at the middle of the column measure from 
measure from this position. Okay? So this is uh, given the symbol of delta. And this is actually what we have seen on Monday, delta, the mid-height deflections. It's just A plus VC, so you A plus again this, you come to these equations. Now, this gives you the deflections here okay, at the mid-height. So when you have P acting there, so when P acting through this delta here, then you have a moment there. Okay. If you cut through here, if you cut through this section here, because this is displaced by delta and there's a P acting, so P multiplied with delta gives you the moment. Okay. P multiplied with delta gives you the moment and it is maximum at the middle of the column there. So we just substitute the delta there, then you get this formula. Okay. Now, this is bending. Okay. This is bending, maximum. Now, now, if we look at the stresses that will happen, the stresses that will happen in the column because it bends, and at the same time, you have this compression force. So the stresses, there are two components. The first one is direct the axial compression, which is P over A. This is P divided by the cross-sectional area A that gives you the stresses due to compression force. And bending also, we know bending also causes bending also cause stresses. Bending also cause axial stress, and the bending is, if you go back to the basic formula, so bending, the stresses that happen is zero at the neutral axis and maximum close to the top or the bottom fiber or the extreme fiber from here. And the formula is moment multiplied with this distance divided by I. So that gives you the moment caused by bending maximum here because moment due to bending is zero at the neutral axis and increasing maximum here or increasing maximum here it could be tensile could be compressive depending on the direction of your moment so this is this is what this equation is all about so this is actually m c divided by i this is a standard formula for bending stress maximum Okay, so this is sigma maximum because it happened here maximum at the mid height where the moment is maximum. Now, if we change everything, if we change this everything to sigma, we change everything to sigma, this is what we get. Because in design, we first design in terms of stress first, then, then you work, work back what are the load that you're allowed to apply. So you get in terms of sigma max equal to that, and R square, R square here is the square of the radius of gyrations. So here you have sigma, which is actual stress happening in the column. You have sigma critical, which correspond to the stress when the load is P critical. Then you have A, A is the imperfections. A is the imperfection. So this is how Perry-Robertson formula includes imperfections. And C is depending on your sections. C depending on your sections. R also depending on your sections. So if you already decide your sections, what is the size of your section of the column, then C is decided, R is also decided. Now, we try to simplify this and then put this everything together as eta, one symbol here, which is AC divided by R square. Then this equation become like this. So this one is a constant. For a given column, where you already decide the size, where with some initial curvature, with some initial curvature. A, we don't know. What is A, we don't know. Okay. But C and R, we, we know if you already decide the size of the column. Now, what we want to decide is sigma here. 
sigma is related to P. So we want to know how much load we can apply, which is how much stress is allowed, how much stress will happen. So we rewrite these equations. We rewrite that equation. It's a quadratic equation because you have sigma, you have sigma here. It becomes a quadratic equation. And then we solve this. We solve this. Okay. And from the root of the quadratic equations, then we get this. Then we take the minimum one. We have a plus or minus. Yeah? So we take the minimum one. So this is the equations that we use to determine what is the stress allowed in that column, which is imperfect. And after that, we multiply with the A, you get the load. Now, sigma max will happen here. Okay. Now, if we limit our column to be still in elastic, if we limit our cell to be in elastic, then we don't allow the stresses, the maximum to happen to be more than to more than the yield. It means our column is still in elastic. Our column is still in elastic. So we design for the column. We don't allow the column materials to go into elastic range, a plastic range. So we make sigma max equal to sigma y, which is the yield stress of the materials that we use for the column. Then finally, equation become like this. So if we want to design this column, we know the materials of the column. Sigma y, we know. This one is a constant that we have to make use of some guideline reference for the value. Then we can solve this. And we can solve this, then we can find sigma, which is the load allowed. Then multiply with the area, then we can design for the section that we have chosen. What is the actual force that we allow? Yeah. So to to avoid having this buckling problem. Now the the eta here, the constant here. Okay. From many many from from many many testings, I think people have done a lot of research and do testing. And they found that I think the eta can be approximately calculated, related by using these equations here, 0 0.0003 L over R. Now, L is the height of the column, R is the radius of gyrations. So if we know the L, if you know the R, then we can, from this Robertson, so this is called Robertson formula, or Robertson constant, and we can get the eta. So if you substitute here, so equation become like this. Okay. Then you can design. Uh, you can use this formula to estimate uh, what is the load that you allow to apply on the column. Okay. So this is example where a, a, a formula which is called Perry-Robertson formula, which can be used for column with imperfections. So Euler and Rankine that I have covered so far, it cannot be used for. It doesn't, does not consider imperfections. So an actual column surely has imperfections. So we make use of this formula. Okay. Now in the assignment, I give one example. I give one question on the calculation using Perry-Robertson formula. Okay, so please go through that. Okay. And in the calculation of this, you need to know what is R, okay? and you need to calculate this sigma critical. Okay? So sigma yield, uh, you need sigma yield. Okay? You need sigma yield. So information, all this must be given. And sigma critical is given by this equation where you already use uh, effective length here. So this already includes for different end conditions different end conditions. Because you use effective length here, so it means that you consider different end conditions. Because effective length for pin, pin, fix, 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 free, depending on the column that you want to design, you have to decide. Okay. So that is the Perry-Robertson formula. Okay. Use stress of the steel. If your beam is steel beam, then use stress of the steel beam. If your 
beam is maybe other material aluminium, then it is the used stress of aluminium. It's the used stress of the material that you use for the column. Uh, this formula, I think, is for slender column. Yeah. This formula is for slender, for slender column. Because if for short column, if you calculate this, you will get the sigma more than the, you will get the sigma, you will get, no, this is not for short column, okay? Because we assume that it is uh, in elastic range, okay? So this is for slender column, for slender column. For short column, we don't cover here. For short column, we need to go to inelastic, inelastic buckling. Here we are still talking about elastic buckling. So this one, I think, to answer is this for slender column. Okay. Any other questions? Um, This is an assignment that I have given to you. Okay, and uh, the first question and second question, I think this one I already asked you in the class. I think we have already. This, I just want you to submit this and uh, to get back to the basic about what is stable, neutral, and unstable. What should be, what should happen to something that you disturb, then you can call that as stable. What you observe. Okay. It's the first questions. The second one is on this one. I, we already covered in class. So just write down in answer form, and I want you to derive this. Why this coefficient that you multiply on the length to get effective length is given by these equations. And the third one is uh, to calculate what is a critical load. And here is an exercise to understand to understand the effect, uh, the effect of the strain. Now, class column, column has two axes. Eh? Column, if we have a, we have a two bending axis. Okay, we have a column circular like this. If we have a column circular like this, this one cannot go okay, like this. Okay, so a column, it can. Yeah, and your subject, the column can bend like this. It can also bend like that. So there are two axes of bending. For circular shape, for circular shape. Now the bending of the section is very much related to I. Yeah, I value, the moment inertia, the moment inertia. So I of this axis and I of this axis, okay. For circular section, they are the same. But for rectangular sections, for rectangular sections, bending about one axis and bending about the other axis who have different I value. Okay. So if we want to find critical load, then we have to find the critical load which is lower. So the column can bend like this, the column can bend like this. Okay. And depending on the restraint, Depending on the restraint, okay, how much, what is the restraint for the column to bend like this? And what is the restraint for the column to bend like this? Then you can find the effective length. You can find the effective length for different bending directions. Then for different bending directions, it's bending about different axes. So you have to find different I value. So this is an, a, a question for you to understand which I value to use which moment inertia that you need to use. It depends on whether the moment the, the column is bending about which axis. Okay. And to find critical load, the answer should be the lower one. Okay, The lower one. If the column bend like this, for the column to bend like this, and for the column to bend like this, the critical load that you are going to find will be different. It will be different. 
And the answer to find critical load, it should be choose the lower one. Okay? Because if you increase the load, it will fail first, it will buckle first when it, each, when it reaches the lower value. It cannot reach to the higher value. But for this column, you find that it can bend like this, it can bend like that. Right? But you have to find answer to this is the one that is critical of the column. It can bend in two directions, so the answer should be the lower one. So this question is the purpose is for you to relate to the restraint in different directions and to find the I that you should use in the Euler formula and also to, to let you know how to get the effective length. Right. So this is question number three. And question number four, this is uh, In experiment, we are given these two results. One member, which is 500 mm, it's then the result that is going to buckle is 9,800 Newton. And when it becomes shorter, the load becomes higher. Okay. Now, the question here is for this, this is pin-ended column. So you should know what is the effective length. And 12.5 mm diameter, what is the I, what is the A? You should Calculate, you should know how to calculate. The first one is determine whether either of this value conforms to Euler theory for buckling load. Conforms to Euler theory means if you use Euler theory to predict the critical load, is it a good prediction or not? Okay. Compare with the experimental result. And second one, this is using this Rankine formula. Assume that this both of these when you predict using Rankine formula, you get very close results. Okay, assume that. Assume that both values are in agreement with Rankine formula. Then based on these two set of results, determine what is the constant sigma s in the Rankine formula and also k. There are two values to determine, two conditions, so you can determine that. Okay. And the next one is, this is using... A mount steel pin ended column is 2.5 meter long and has the cross section shown in the figure here. So this is the I section. If the yield stress in compression of the mount steel is 300 newton per mm square, this is sigma Y, determine the maximum load the column can be stand using the Robertson formula. Using Robertson formula. And this is pin ended column. This is pin ended column. Sigma Y is 300 Newton per mm square. And then the section is like this. So you need to know how to calculate I of this. What is the I? What is the I of this section about this axis and about this axis? So which axis you should use? And then okay, determine the maximum load the column can withstand. Then compare this value with Euler theory. You compare with Euler theory, see what is the difference. This is next question is uh, going to the come in part two. Okay, not yet coming. Right. Okay, so I give you I give you a deadline. Huh? Deadline, which is. And the slide because at the end of the month we have to project to deliver. To project to deliver. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can. I will. I will extend this to next year. <laughs> Oh, very long. I extend to next year. Okay. Next year, then I forget. Okay, so I will extend this. So this uh, question one, two is not, this should be very fast. Question three, but uh, try to do this. Okay. Any questions? Any question on this assignment? 